Good morning, students. Our today's topic is Shelford Law of Tolerance. The tolerance range in which the individual can survive. So this principle it was given by Ernest Shelford in 1911. It states that organism success is based on the complex set of conditions and that each organism has certain minimum, maximum. and optimum environmental factor or combination of factors that determines the success the further elaboration of the theory of tolerance was credited to ronald good so the points uh, the main thing in the lebigs law of minimum you have studied that there are certain factors and the factor which is present in the minimum amount that determines the pace of the uh, process or the reaction but in the case of shelford law of tolerance suppose we are talking about one factor for example temperature as one factor so we can say that in the temperature range we have got uh, maximum range we have got a uh, minimum range and we have got the optimum range the number of organism which are present more we will see in the optimum temperature so basically shelford law of tolerance what it explains that the uh, tolerance range is important that is the range in which the individual it feels comfortable to live in that very range the population it is more there the reproductive success is more the number of individuals they are more but a very very important thing here that the law of tolerance or the theory of tolerance is uh, uh, variable that is as i've told you that the individuals they are uh, available maximum where the optimum range is there but this range is not fixed because this range it changes as the season changes this range it changes as the environmental condition changes the life stages of the organism when it changes again the uh, tolerance range it varies for example in the case of blue crabs the eggs and the larvae they require higher salinity than the adults so at different uh, life stages we have got different uh, preference for the tolerance range so the range of the optimum may affect uh, for uh, you can say different processes within the same organism so we can say that where the individual it feels comfortable at that very range the individuals they are uh, reproducing successfully so in this uh, graph we can say that this is a graph basically which is drawn between the population and the gradient for example temperature is one of the gradient right so in the population we have marked from low to the high and in the gradient we have marked from the low to the high so we'll see that there is one uh, zone of tolerance zone of tolerance means where the individuals they can reproduce successfully right in this zone of tolerance it shows a bell shaped curve right and in the center at the top in the optimum range we'll see the highest population density whereas as we go towards left as well as as we go towards right there is fall in the number of the individual so that zone is known as the critical minimum zone which is present towards the left and which is present towards the right of the optimum zone it is a critical maximum zone where the population is present but it is present in the less amount right so in the zone of tolerance you can find any individual where the reproduction is successful but when we look at the uh, uh, left and right side of the zone of tolerance means the temperature suppose it is lower than the uh, minimum then what we'll see there is a zone of intolerance the organism cannot tolerate that very uh, low temperature and it no species it will exist similarly if we look at the right side of this graph we'll see there is again a zone of intolerance and no species it will exist so definitely where the optimum temperature is there there the individuals they will best live so in this graph we can say there is a zone of tolerance right there is a critical minimum zone there is a critical maximum zone and there is a zone of intolerance right so maximum population is present in the optimum 
range right so three zones they are now clear to you in the shelfer law of tolerance one is the optimum zone where maximum individual is present maximum reproductive success is there then zone of stress zone of stress is on both the sides of the optimum zone where the individuals they are present but in lesser amount right and there is a zone of intolerance where no individual it is present on both the sides of this uh, tolerance range right then coming to the organisms definitely when we talk about the tolerance we have got two terms for it two terms means one is a uri e u r y and second term is steno s t e n o this uri term is for the broad range of the tolerance that is sometimes you have seen that some individuals they can tolerate broad range of uh, variation in the temperature but other individuals they cannot tolerate the broad range they will die they live in a narrow range so such individuals they are known as steno uh, suppose may i will talk about the temperature so i'll talk about the steno thermal uri thermal uri thermal means those which can tolerate broad range of temperature uh, steno thermal means those which can tolerate narrow range of temperature right so um when the conditions they are not optimum for a species with respect to one ecological factor the limits of tolerance may be reduced with respect to the other ecological factor as you all know the individuals they don't depend upon one single factor because for example individual is living it requires optimum temperature also it requires sunlight also it requires pressure also it requires better soil conditions also right humidity it is required so large number of factors together they will affect the placement of individual the success of individual in that very eco system right so the organisms they are not actually living at the optimum range agar if i if i talk about one factor uh, it is not so that only one factor is important a one optimum uh, range it is important for the survival of the organism large number of other factors they are together be responsible for the survival of the organism in that very range for example i'll give you one simple example that is the in nature the orchids they grow only in shade right now they can grow well very good in the sunlight full sunlight if in if the full sunlight is there they can also grow but they are normally growing on the shade but why so why they are not growing in the full sunlight because they require they require cool temperature if they are kept cool only then in full sunlight they can grow right so the sunlight as well as the shade the temperature they all play together for the uh, survival of that very individual right so the period of reproduction is usually a critical period right when the environmental factors they are most likely to be the limiting one so various individuals they migrate in order to successfully reproduce for example in the case of anadromous fishes what are anadromous fishes those fishes which live in the sea but they migrate to fresh water for reproduction so that less stress is given to the young ones and the young ones they get better food better temperature less competition and then they can grow well right similarly in the case of catadromous fishes also they spend whole of their life in the in the fresh water but they migrate to sea for reproduction and again they come back right so various individuals the migratory birds look at the migratory birds right when the harsh environment is there very cold environment is there they migrate right from the himalayas huge number of birds they come to chandigarh right for the survival only right and again when the temperature it becomes normal right they go back to their original place so tolerance range is very important so in this law of shelford uh, in this law what we basically say is that there is a limit there is a range of tolerance in which the individual it lives 
successfully i hope the concept of law of tolerance is clear to you thank you